When I first started in Chi Alpha and was doing an internship, the words I kept hearing over and over and over, faithful, available, teachable. What we heard yesterday from Mark was an incredible teaching on what teachability looks like in our lives. And I hope that it's not just a one week experience for you, but that you continue to ponder some of the truth that he shared with us yesterday and allow the Holy Spirit to just utilize it in your life as you continue to grow and mature in Christ. We're coming to the end of the week and I'm certain it's been an incredible week. There's been so many activities and debriefings and interaction with workers in uh, different countries around the world. And we would really like to finish on a high note of importance that sort of encapsulates what stands behind all of the abiding that we do. Is it just trying to add activities to our schedule? Is it trying to live up to some concept of spirituality? What is it that ultimately we need to know about abiding, the purpose of abiding and objectivity? Again, using the life of Moses, I want us to look at a passage of scripture that every time I read it, and I've read it many, many times in my life, it gives a stirring deep in my soul because I ask myself, am I living by this reality? And I, the theme today is knowing what matters. And we're looking at a story in Exodus 33, beginning with verse 12. Let me read it for us. Then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom will you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, this is God speaking, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go up with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us so that we, I and your people may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight and I have known you by name. How would you feel if God said those words to you? I have known you by name. One of my favorite people in church history is John Wesley. And he had a remarkable life and a remarkable mem uh, ministry, and he impacted British society and subsequently the American colonies in ways that even today we still hear his words and his values trickling down to us. This man traveled over 250,000 miles on horseback during his life. I'm not talking about a car or a plane or a boat, horseback. He preached over 40,000 messages, 40,000. He fought against slavery. He brought massive social reform to prisons, school systems. He built chapels. He oversaw thousands of people who came into the ministry. He single-handedly led one of the greatest revivals in the history of the church. But imagine this, this great overachiever that when you compare what God's doing with you to what God did with him, you just feel small, now get a load of this one. He got up every morning at 4 a.m. for four hours of prayer. I look at that and, and I think to myself, is this the price it takes for God to have full access to me and use me in powerful ways? And what was Moses trying to say that day when he had a face-to-face, -face, that's what it says in just previous to the passage we read that God came down and talked to Moses face-to-face. What is it that is coming out of Moses in that moment? What hunger that is insatiable is inside of him? Because it's what I want inside of me. I'm sure it's what you want inside of you. That somehow we go beyond just Bible reading, journaling, memorizing scripture, listening to worship music, or what other important habit we have in our abiding to where we get down to what really matters when it comes to our time with God. 
Moses here is at the end of his life. He's about ready to hand his ministry over to Joshua. He's 118 years old. And God is sort of giving him some of the last glimpses and, and the last truths that he's gonna live by the last two years of his life. It's one thing to be used to start a ministry. It's another thing to hand that ministry over. And it's one thing to look back on life and say, this is all that God has done. It's another thing to finish that life well. So what did Moses know that really mattered? There are two statements in this, and I wanna reread them for us. The first one is when he said this, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. I love that statement. I love it because the reality is the only difference between you and I and all these people in the nations is Jesus. If we would be honest with ourselves, it's not our passport, it's not our education, it's not our skill set, it's not our likability, it's the fact that the God of the universe decided to live inside of us. That's what distinguishes us. In fact, the second statement in this that I love is where Moses says, is it not by your going with us so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? You see, the goal of our abiding, the goal of our ministry, the goal of our lives really, is not to pray more than our well-meaning Muslim friends pray. It's not to be more mystical than our well-meaning Hindu or Buddhist friends are. It's not to be more intellectual than our rigorously intellectual atheist friends are. We're not here to outperform them. Outperforming them will never change them. What will change them is when they see something inside of us they don't see anywhere else. What will change them is when God's glory actually resides in our temple. That's what we're called in Corinthians. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what we see here in Moses is a heart of flame, a heart that says, despite the miracles, despite the glorious history you've given us, despite bringing us out of slavery and leading us to the promised land, what distinguishes us from everyone else is you, God. It's not who we are. It's not how well we sing. It's not how well we write or preach or anything else. It's you. That is abiding. Knowing this and letting this permeate everything we do in abiding is what will draw us into that deep love affair with Jesus. And when we reach that point, we won't have to worry as much about the best strategy or the best media to use or the best way to get out in the dorms and into the parts of the campus. All of a sudden, it will be God surging through us. And when God is in us, He will draw people to us. That is what is really important.